Welcome to this week's Artist Spotlight, hosted by NFT Gallery or NFTG. I am Alex. I'm an NFTG community member and will be your host for this exciting evening as we talk to Andre Maripolsky, the artist who is creating the first NFTG members only NFT profile pictures. So very, very, very exciting topic. This session will be diving in pun intended because it is a shark NFT PFP. So diving into his experience with creating that and just talking to him about what that was like as a first NFT PFP collection and all of that good stuff. So we will be making those available to members to mint for free. We have now decided to make it free for any NFTG members. So nice perk in January of 2022. If you have any questions during this session, please do not hesitate to tweet at NFTG live. We'll be scanning through the questions and leaving some time at the end for Andre to answer some of them. So just to dive in, tell all of you a little bit about NFTG. I see a few people in here that I know already are NFTG members. But for those of you who are not, NFTG is a decentralized community of artists, engineers, and creators who are starting a global NFT-based movement that bridges both the physical and the digital spaces. Our mission is to create a digital which is a synergy of physical plus digital assets, ecosystem that's 100% focused on rewarding and engaging our contributors, creators, and community. Our technology is powered by our parent company, realitems.io, which is an enterprise SaaS company that gives products a real identity. They have been doing this work in the NFT space for about four years, which is a long time <laughs> in the NFT space, and are one of the first companies that actually broke in and did some exciting stuff in that space. Just to talk a little bit more about Real Items and NFTG, we did an incredible collaboration at Art Basel in Miami earlier this month, so December 2021. Real Items and NFTG made digital pieces, so NFTs of physical pieces for over 230 pieces for the well-known Janice Gallery's display in the context show. So really, really cool. Art Basel is a really fantastic event. If anyone has not been, I highly, highly recommend going. And it was really amazing for Real Items and NFTG to get to be a big part of bringing kind of the technology and another aspect of experiencing art through technology and NFTs to a really prominent Art Basel gallery. So that was really fantastic. Any collectors that buy pieces from that gallery um, will be able to leverage essentially the real items technology to record video memories linked to the NFTs, which is a fantastic aspect of the real items technology. And then essentially when they pass down those amazing physical pieces to their uh, kids or grandkids, that NFT will go with them and they'll be able to essentially leave video memories for them to look at for generations to come. So very exciting application of the technology. We have done a similar collaboration with Andre Mirapolsky, a series of eco fidgetal shark pieces where you receive his fine art piece. You receive the Real Items and NFTG NFT that goes with that. You can record memories with that. And the cool thing about that collection is that you also get to name a real life shark through our partnership with the ocean conservation entity Beneath the Waves. So a little bit more about them because they are an NFTG partner that we were very excited to have essentially coordinate with Andre on his exciting shark pieces. They are a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting ocean health and using science and technology to catalyze ocean policy. They focus on threatened species conservation and marine protected areas with a deep affinity for sharks. So if you're interested in joining a growing community of artists, engineers, creators, and getting to take advantage of several members, only NFT drops annually, including the one we'll be discussing today. If you're interested in learning from those who have been in the NFT space for four years, as well as the blockchain space for about 10, we invite you to join our community. If you'd like to become a member, we're offering a fixed supply of 10,000 lifetime memberships to the NFTG platform uh, that are available now. So in order to learn more, join us on Discord, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, all at NFTG Live, and mint your membership today. We'd love to have you as part of the community. With that, I will say I want to offer a warm, warm welcome to our artist for the evening, Andre Mirapolsky. Um, Andre is a NFTG OG member, one of the first. <laughs> it's very exciting. He is an internationally known artist with a long history of really impressive collaborations with 
MTV, Viva LA, Absolute Vodka, Elton John, Bette Midler, Tonight Show, and many, many, many more. We are incredibly lucky to have been able to commission him for the first members only NFT PFP profile picture drop, which as I mentioned is being released next month. And very, very excited to have him talk about his experience creating these NFT PFPs today. So Andre, I will say, Andre joined us a while back on another artist spotlight where we talked all about his career and his work. That artist spotlight video is on YouTube. So actually, quick question for the audience. If you have seen that either on YouTube or if you joined us on Twitter Spaces a couple months ago when we had this on Twitter Spaces, if you could raise your hand. Out of curiosity, I'm just curious to see how many of you have actually seen that. Awesome, awesome. If you have not seen that video, it's a great one. Definitely suggest going to our NFTG Discord and locating the link and taking a look at that. But for those of you who might not have seen that, I do want to just kind of jump into this interview with having Andre highlight some of the kind of really super notable parts of his career, just so that you've got a little bit of a a picture of Andre's depth of work and creativity that he's done in the space. So with that, Andre, I will turn it over to you. You have been very fortunate to have such a long, amazing, amazing, amazing career. Definitely very inspirational. I think for anyone who's an artist, if they even had, you know, a fraction of (laughs) what you've been able to do, it would be considered an incredible career. So of everything that you have done, what really kind of sticks out to you as really notable? What would you want to kind of share with the group today? Well, in, in regards to that question, before I answer that question, I would just like to I would just like to say thank you very much. And, and I would like to also give my my thanks to NFTG, Real Items and NFTG. And thank you guys so much for deciding on me to be the first artist to do your first PFP. Andre, uh, the pleasure is ours especially after seeing the sneak previews and kind of following you along this journey. Honestly, the pleasure is ours. We are more than excited to have you be the first artist. So thank you for being well, willing to Thank all of us. <laughs> <laughs> thank all of us, because I, I, I think there's tremendous synergy, synchronicity that have gone into us all getting on the same page with this pro- with this project and hopefully there'll be many more and we can promote this and and bring in a lot of other fabulous artists to come afterwards and so i just wanted to thank you guys and, and also when you opened up when you opened up your talking you were saying how excited excited you are and, and i just want to back that up as well and, and say you know how incredibly excited i am to be doing to be jumping into the nft world which i want which i really came to me this year I started visualizing this year and seeing a lot of the artwork being done on NFTs. And I saw a lot of these characters, a lot of it was character driven. And that's where I, I've been working on my shark character for over 20 years. And that's where that idea came together. But cool. I'll, I'll talk more about that. But your, your question to me was, what other projects do I hold really close to my heart? Mm-hmm. And and I, I, I and I have a lot, a lot of projects, but I want to, um, since, since working with you guys is a first time for me and for you and uh, so i just wanted to I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a couple a couple projects that are very close to my heart that were also first time projects so i'm only going to talk about really the first time projects there's there's enough of those yep so one of them and also on youtube as long as you're as long as my that interview that i did for you guys is on youtube now i just want to tell the public out there that um if they look under mirapolsky i i also have a lot of different uh videos um, uh, showing off uh, different projects that I've been involved with. So if you just look up Mirapolsky, you, you'll, there's probably about a dozen videos on there. One of them, one of those videos, which I'll, I'll, I'll speak first about, which was, uh, and to this day, I still think it's the first and only time it's ever happened. But in nine, I think it was in 1992 for MTV, they had a show, I think it was maybe the third or the second year of the show called the Rock and Jock B-Ball Jam, where they would get a... Um, they get a, a base. Uh, this would be a basketball game. Half the team would be Hollywood celebrities, and half the team would be basketball celebrities. And the benefits would go to some charity. And they had me, uh, by because of synchronicities, cir- circumstances, kind of a longer story, but make it short. I painted the entire six thousand square feet, the entire middle basketball court at Poly Pavilion for one game, one night, called the Rock and Jock B-Ball Jam. And as soon as the show was over, the Sanders came 
to uh, to take it up. But on video, it's forever. And you can see that also on just look up Rock and Jock B-Ball Jam on so cool. uh, on uh, YouTube. And so that was a first and only. Another first was The Tonight Show. So I was commissioned. I was the first visual artist in the history of The Tonight Show over 50 years. And this is a, a longer story as well. But again, I was at the right place at the right time. And I was commissioned to do a, a huge body of work of, of large floors, maybe maybe eight by, I don't know, eight feet by 20 feet or something, 25 feet. And then big backdrops that were 18 feet by 30 some odd feet or whatever. And I was the first, like I said, I was the first visual artist to do that. The, the uh, producers of the show and the art directors thought that if they got an artist to do original artwork for the set, and these were these were for the set that they had they had, they had created for the visiting bands, because at the time this was under Jay Leno's time, and uh, at that time there was competition with, with with David Letterman, and David Letterman always had the same set for every every band that came in to visit, and the Tonight Show they want they want to create a, a unique set for every band that came on. So that's how I got involved, and I, and they commissioned me to do these large these large set pieces, which normally would have been done by the you know by the by the set uh, department at NBC, which they have lots of people and it's completely unionized. But the, the producers thought if if they got an an artist an original an artist to paint everything originally from his hand, if that showed up more impactfully, because it was done by hand originally, on TV ten percent more. And they were paying me the same price, actually, that they were paying NBC set department. Then why not? But that, that's still they had to go through the unions and they had they had to get that approved. And they mm. did. And but the only thing that the union stipulated, absolutely stipulated in this situation was that I had to sign my name on the front of the artwork. Now, since these these pieces were very, very large. You know, I, I had to sign my name in proportion to the piece. <laughs> yeah, well. So my name, my name was visible very often on camera. And they said, because scenic artists do not sign the scenery. And the way they mm -hmm. were able to get this around the union was because I was I was an independent, well-known artist that that was an artist and not a scenic a scenic artist. So that, that I thought was an interesting, an interesting I wonder, I wonder if any other people since then have been able to sign their I would doubt it. Yeah, I would that's doubt cool. it. Very yeah. cool. And then, and then the third, the third one, one of a kind thing, once one off thing was back in 1980. I was commissioned at the last, very, very last minute. It's a little longer story, but I was commissioned for El, by Elton John for his 1980 81 World Tour, and I, I, w I was able, to, I was, I did seven different outfits for that tour. One of which which he got the night before was this piano outfit he he wore in Central Park at the Central Park free concert with 500,000 people. I think it's still his singular largest audience he's ever had. And I did this piano outfit, all the outfits, they were all embroidered. They showed up fantastically well on camera because of this embroidery. Cause it turned out, I didn't know this until afterwards, but I, I was just looking at something that would be opaque on a fabric but it turns out like the, the embroidery thread is like a satin thread. So it's metallic. And when you have a lot of it together, it, it acts as a, as a light, as a, a mirror. It doesn't absorb any light. So you could take a picture of this thing from like across a football field and there would be no fading at all. So that was that was a first. And nobody had ever done a piano outfit for the piano man. Even by 1980, he was a superstar with 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 uh, costumes. So so. It happened to be the Piano Man, Central Park, 500,000 people that looked fantastic on camera. I really, so you're in good company. Indeed, <laughs> with, I love it. With my first, whenever I, I seem to get involved with something for the first time, they always seem to connect. They yeah, always seem crazy. to connect. So I'm really very, cool. very extremely excited to be involved and to see the progression of, of how this PP, oh, PP, I'm still involved with PPP loans, the PFP. <laughs> As I understand it, I'm probably mm -hmm. gonna, I'm probably going to be looking at all ten thousand pieces. Indeed, yep, just quality control. But I know it's hard to get my head around that many, and and how and how these images, you know, change by, by by the uh, by the most by certainly. The, and I'll, I'll give a little bit more a little bit more background there, but just to kind of paint a bit of a picture, Andre, I think it's so cool 
that you were able to design uh, Elton John's Piano Man outfit for the Central Park concert. So that's clothing oriented. You were able to do Tonight Show sets. So huge, huge, huge pieces. You painted a basketball court for MTV. <laughs> Insane. I know also you mentioned on, on our uh, original artist spotlight, but Pomona Copia is a middle school and high school that Andre was commissioned. Andre, you have one wall left, right? Is that correct? Yes, this is in Pomona, California. And I've also got videos of, of that on, on uh, YouTube as well. But uh, in, in uh, 2015, 2014, I painted one wall at the high school. And this is a school, the school is called the School of Arts Enterprise. And it's an art school. They teach theater, art, music, dance. And there's three of these kinds of like fame schools. So they, they have three of these kinds of schools in Los Angeles County. And one of the best things about these schools that I love, I, I, I always love giving out this statistic. I, I never get over it. Because statistically, in these three high school, middle schools of the arts in Los Angeles County, they have a graduation rate, a high school graduation rate at these schools of like ninety nine percent, and okay. and then and then they have like ninety five, ninety six percent of seniors going on to college. I I'm, I'm not I wouldn't stake my life on it, but I I believe the high That's school graduation high. in California is something like seventy five percent. So it 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 just goes to show how important the arts can be in people's lives. And a liberal arts education um, is in people's lives. And yeah, so in 2014, I did this one wall for the high school. And then in 2015, they invited me back and they had had this uh, whole building donated to them in downtown Pomona uh, for their middle school. And the people in the community call it the monster building. They hated this building. And I, I took, I got a hold of it. And about, I don't know, 10, 15,000 square feet. It's become one of the major landmarks, not only in Pomona, but for the whole inland valley or all, all the other areas around Pomona as well. Okay. And and then this year, just about two months ago, I went back and I did another wall at the high school. And I'll be doing another, another the last wall at the high school, the beginning of the, of the new year. So after that, it will be the entire high school and middle school I will have painted. And oh, remember, cool. it's art school. So these kids are, are getting my vibe. I mean, I, I think it's a positive vibe. I really consciously and subconsciously really, really want to put out good energy out there. So right. it's interesting to me how, how that can influence kids going all the way through middle school, all the way through, through high school. And I, I consider it actually a big responsibility and an honor as well. So, so that's uh, it's it's called the Pomona Copia. People can Google it and made up that word. They can Google it and they can find it. Well, they can find it all over. The yeah, planet. absolutely. But very exciting. And I will say, NFTG and Real Items are really excited that this year you allowed us to kind of pull you into the NFT space, which is very, very fantastic. As I mentioned, we have the Eco Fidgetal Collection, which is where. You can buy an Andre Mirapolsky fine art painting. You get the digital NFT. You also get to name a live shark that Beneath the Waves is tracking. Andre also has a collection of water sharks that were original watercolor paintings that are now NFTs. You can purchase the NFTs for those. And now, very exciting, he does have this NFT PFP collection. It is a shark-inspired collection on theme for Andre. And I will say, one of the best parts of it, I think probably most of you on this call have in some way, shape, or form read about NFTs, get and gotten exposed to some of the really crazy NFT drops that have happened over this last year. One thing that I really love about Andre's NFT PFP collection is that it is hand drawn and hand colored. So that is really unique. A lot of the NFTs that we're seeing pop up in the space are these digital NFTs, you know, so it's a digitally rendered image, which is don't get me wrong, very cool. But taking the time and the effort to create hand-drawn NFTs, <laughs> rather hand-drawn sharks that then become our NFT PFPs, as well as coloring them is really kind of next level. So Andre, I, I was really impressed when you told me that that's what you wanted to do for your 10,000 well, NFT PFPs. Pretty amazing. Again, it's experiment. Well, I guess it's all experimental. I mean, you can look at all of this as being experimental at this stage in the game. But yeah, but I, you know, in looking at looking, uh, researching a bit, the, you know, researching this year, you know, a, a lot of the imagery, in fact, I could even say maybe most of the imagery, it, it has a, a very kind of perfect 
look to it, a very, I think, mechanical kind of look because it's so it's so much of it is digitally. It even starts, it originates digitally even or something. And it just looks too clean for me. So mm-hmm. I have a motto. I, I, I have a motto that I like. I like perfection in imperfection. Mm-hmm. I, I always it. like to have a little edge, you know, a little edge. I, I don't. I don't care. I, I, I've never been a, a, a big technique person. I don't. I don't necessarily care how you how you solve the problem, how you get there technically. To me, it's something whatever it is and whatever area it is, it's got to have a feeling. It's got to have a good feeling. Yeah. It's got to have some kind of soul. And I and I and I feel that uh, if there's one thing that that brings all of my work together and all the different platforms that I've done over the years now, which you know somehow makes sense you know, decades later is energy. And I think all of my work has a certain, it has a certain energy and there's nothing I can do about it. It's just, that's, that's my, it's my thing. And I think that's why when I have, I haven't, I don't think, I don't consider myself really a commercial artist. I haven't had a lot of, I don't feel I've had a lot of commercial clients or I've done a lot of commercial gigs. The ones that I have done have all been kind of at the top of the of a pyramid in whatever in whatever field that's in i always seem to to generate at the top at the very at the very beginning but all of those collaborations i've done with those cert, with those certain people or entities whatever they also have high energy they also have mm-hmm. real positive energy so i've been able to be cast well and when the casting is done well there's mm-hmm. magic and that's yeah. and that's what i'm predicting with these shark pfps <laughs> i couldn't agree more and i will also I say these sharks Something something that definitely strikes me when I look at your paintings, and, and before I say this, I will preface it. It was so funny to me. I was at Art Basel this year and found this piece that I absolutely loved. Just creative mix of mediums. Just, I thought, absolutely intriguing and beautiful. And there was a lady that was actually, <laughs> I don't think she realized I was hearing, but she said to her partner, you know, it just doesn't doesn't speak to me. And art is really subjective. You can show right. the same piece to a totally. hundred people and you'll get a hundred different reactions. Some people will start crying. Some people will start totally. laughing, you know, right. but any sort of art that I think makes you feel something is really incredible. And I love in all of your pieces. And I, I feel that it comes across in the PFPs you've created. You really communicate this beautiful humor. So sharks, you know, these are char- kind of caricature type sharks that are quite funny and you know what you've decided to depict them doing and funny yeah, funny I and I, funny and ironic indeed indeed <laughs> funny and ironic yes definitely definitely take some intelligence to go into you know planning and and creating that so i love that and and i do love that there is an energy i think between the colors the color palette you've chosen it, just looking at these pieces, your live art pieces, your water sharks, it's a an energy that's definitely passed on to whoever's getting to enjoy, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I think so my, I my stuff, my, my stuff does pop out. I mean, it does, it does speak to you. Indeed. Well, I will say your personality really pops out. So I think it's just but in, that. in relationship, in what you're talking about, the personality with with the, the shark character, and I look at it as a character, and I, I think I said it earlier at some point. I've been doing these sharks. I, I, I've been working with sharks now for over 20 years, and it was it was uh, I introduced them first in a in a, in a, a light board mural in New York, and what was that? That was in 2000. But there, it was the scene this 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 light board mural that I did was a scene of these sharks coming up out of the Atlantic and and attacking this big city New York and taking over. And then in in 2006. I had a commission to do a, a mural that ran alongside a 60 foot long lap pool for a very modern house in the Hollywood Hills for, for, a, for a big Hollywood director. And I saw the water, I saw the, the 60 foot lap pool and I saw the water and it immediately triggered me to think about, of course, sharks. Okay. So I, I did, I did that idea of the, of the sharks coming out of the water, out of the Pacific this time and, and attacking Los Angeles and Hollywood and taking over. Except this time, I put sunglasses on all of them to okay. connotate, you know, Hollywood and and swimming with the sharks, but but kind of being sh- shifty, still with those ironic smiles, but shifty. And the big the big change, and that and I've kept the L.A. sharks with sunglasses all these years until 
this PFP because mm-hmm. one of one of the, the, the biggest changes in, in, in the PFP sharks, since there are 10,000 of them, <laughs> was I was I, I put on some because I think I think we did these with maybe I think 160 traits, something like that. And yeah. so I put in as some of the traits, I put in eyeballs and tongues which once you start putting eyes onto anything, it creates tremendous personality. I, 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 I mean, like I said, the, the eyes are the windows of the soul and all that. Well, people say that it's cliche because it's, I think it's kind of true. So when you, start, when you start putting eyeballs in different types of shapes of eyes and positioning of the pupils and all that stuff, it makes a tremendous change in the character. And it changes, it, you know, it changes the personality tremendously. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how that plays in, 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 the, in the 10, the, the 10,000 concept. And, and then, on, you know, obviously on top of the creating PFPs, the process of doing that and thinking, having to think down the road to 10,000, you know, down the road. And because from what I understand, you know, these are all, these are all created, um, you know, on the computer, uh, but through algorithms, but all, all, all on, you know, layers and files or layers and stuff. So yeah. that, that by the time you get to 10,000, it's interesting to see how things lay down and don't, and somehow can still have the background and the foreground and everything can still have its own integrity to some, I don't know to what degree, but hopefully it's a good degree. And it doesn't just get all messy. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Because uh, I've seen about, let's say I've seen about a hundred, 150, 175 so far. And so far they're perfect. They all work. Love so- it. Hats off to you for being very strategic about picking what characteristics and kind of going through and doing due diligence. You've got an awesome team on your side, Fabulous who, team. you know, has been doing their due diligence as far as crossing the different layers and just seeing if anything doesn't work well together. If it's something that we want to kind of set as a rule within the tool to be able to, you know, say, okay, this and this don't go together. So don't mix these. So Um, we're all, we're all shaking down in the first, the first time boat together. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed. Oh, absolutely. And so just a quick update for everyone who is an NFTG member or is considering buying a membership. Andre has finished his part of drawing, coloring, digitizing the hand-drawn layers, which is all very exciting. We are taking it over now and we'll be doing the digitization of essentially creating from his layers, creating the 10,000. And as Andre mentioned earlier, it is really important for us to continue to have the artist perspective and kind of just influence despite the technology input that has to happen to make something like 10,000 pieces. Andre, if we were to ask you to sit and make 10,000 of those, oh it, would take you years. it would take you years probably. Well, also, also for me, cause I've always, I've, I've always had a thing for branding. I, I love, I love branding and I love the, the whole concept of repetition, repetition. And that was my whole idea from, from developing these sharks from the beginning was taking, uh, taking, and, and I have to say, up until now, up until these PFPs, the other thing besides putting putting more human characters or traits on these on these sharks, the, these PFPs sharks are also colored. The, the shark itself have different different color combinations. Up until now, I've only done them all as great white sharks, which. Hmm. Now, because of uh, you know what the situation, the sociological situation, they can't all be white. <laughs> that there needs to there needs to be more exclusivity. Absolutely, um, I couldn't agree more. So, so with these PFPs, there's a tremendous range now. But the original shark sharks and all the and on my and on the Shark Tales website, those are all more, more original sharks, and they're all they're all great white sharks. I will say laundry. Um, I think so you I, have something so creative with it. I, I feel like but, even even the piece I'm looking at now. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, the shark is white and yellow and the bottom one is white and pink. So it's, it's been, you know, creative, but we've definitely gotten to kind of expand that a bit through these NFT PFPs. No, no, I I expanded it tremendously in the PFPs. (laughs) I mean, tremendously. Yeah. So, so for me, that's also a big, exciting thing just to, to to make that break for me, to get me out of the whiteness of the great white sharks, Mm. you know, that, 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 that's why it's very exciting for me creatively on a lot of other levels doing these PFPs besides 
you know, doing the 10,000. But the reason, so I'm saying this because I like the repetition of, of, of an image. So I, I was doing these great white sharks now. So with a 10,000, I, that was a, that helped to decide that they had to be more inclusive because I, it was, I, I just couldn't see doing 10,000 white sharks. Yeah. Um, oh, definitely. But, but in doing, in doing 10,000 sharks that are all in the same position and the same place, on the paper in the middle, that to me is like super exciting to see that kind of repetition. Mm -hmm. It makes it different, but it's still being the same. And that and that's why I think it's even stronger when something is the same, but a little different. So I, I feel the audience has to continue to work at it, but they already know it, but they still have to work at it a bit. And that's what I think gives it a little bit more impetus. And that's why Indeed. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking very positively about this collection. Absolutely. I will also say, if anyone's not seen the mini trailer about Andre's NFT PFP collection, please do not hesitate. It is available on the NFTG live website, that live website, as well as on the Discord. So feel free to tune into that so you can get a little bit of a visual, maybe even while you're while you're listening to us, get a visual of kind of what Andre did to create these. So are you talking about Shark so. Tales? dot art um no so we have it posted on the nftg website okay. and also in the discord you might have it on your site too but regardless definitely tune in watch that it's a cool little snippet we'll be releasing more uh snippets as we go but andre uh, mm -hmm. another few questions for you so talk to me about some of the elements that you've used. So for, I think, any NFT PFP collection, especially ones that are large, and ours is 10,000 because we allow each membership that we have as uh, an available membership to mint, be able to get one of these NFT PFPs for free. Originally, we were saying we'll have the members pay gas. Now we've decided as kind of a customer-obsessed type situation, we want to make it as accessible for everyone, we want to make those. We are covering the price of gas, which is awesome. Oh, We're minting on Polygon. Yes, yeah, they're very yeah, nice. Enough, right? We are minting on Polygon. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> right Indeed. on. We are minting on Polygon partially because it is the only eco-friendly a blockchain, I believe, at this point, or one of one of the few, as well as it helps have low gas fees, which is very exciting. But yes, so for anyone who has a membership, you have multiple memberships. I personally have three, I think. I'll be able to mint three of Andre's sharks, which will be awesome again for free. So that's a nice little, as as mentioned, hand drawn, hand colored bit of kind of a tiny art piece that I can then take and store in my wallets, and hopefully in the future be able to transfer to you know, perhaps land in the metaverse, I can put this up as a piece that goes in my house in the metaverse. So definitely excited to be able to, Andre, kind of take you. We're super excited and very impressed at how quickly you've been open to adopting NFTs, having an eco digital collection, having your NFT water sharks, doing this NFT PFP is huge, absolutely huge. But we at NFTG and Real Items are very excited to continue pushing the envelope well, and ushering the process. I think it's been somehow it's been, it's been our destiny or fate or something because we, we have really come together very, very fast and very, very strong and going forward the same way. It's amazing. Love it. It's great. So Andre, quick question for you. I would yeah. love for us to dive in a little bit into the actual NFT PFPs that people will be seeing in January 2022. And you have a lot of different traits. Can you talk to me about perhaps some of the traits you picked? And perhaps if they have any, any, if they've been traits that you've used in your other artwork, or if they're new traits, could you perhaps just talk to me about some of the things that you chose to include and whether or not it was something sure. that you could also bought somewhere else or something sure. that's well, like I, I said a little earlier about how I've always had a thing for branding and, and symbolism, using symbolism and branding or whatever. So so throughout my I've been painting since I was eight years old. And um, amazing. And then and that was before pop art. <laughs> and then when I was exposed to pop art in the 60s, that that kind of revolutionized my whole and, and affected me. I'm still doing this. I'm still being I'm still being influenced by it today. So I I. I I've used a lot of uh, symbolism through the years that I like to repeat that can mean different things. They can, they can be funny. They can be sad. They can be dramatic depending on how they're organized and presented. So, and that's why when I was talking about the symbol of the shark 
which that alone is, is, is you know is such a tremendous worldwide um, cultural uh, totem symbol. It, it has yeah. a tremendous meaning for cultures throughout the world. Um, the, the, the image of the shark, besides the shark being like 450 million years old or something. So, so at any rate, I have always loved skulls. I've always loved like lightning bolts and arrows and a lot of symbology like that. So, so I, I incorporated, I incorporated um, a lot of those kinds of images to be traits in, in this collection, like let's say lightning bolts to represent power. I've got a bunch of skulls in there. Um, you know, I, I also I also made a thing out of the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin symbol, and then the oh, yeah. um, and then the uh, the uh, symbol as well. and then the other one. What's the other? The, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, ETH, Ethereum. The Ethereum, right, right. Mm -hmm. So I've got that in there. So I, I really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm covered in symbology. I, I love it. it. It makes a point to me. It, I love it. It, start, it starts to create a storyline, a narrative, without having to actually say the narrative. So like mm -hmm. you say, art is subjective. So the symbolism is, and how you use the symbolism is subjective as, is, is subjective as well. And it's leaving that open a bit to the audience to mm -hmm. be involved. You know, we the, talked about this. Absolutely. I love it. And I'm very excited to see all of what the 10,000 look like. Yeah. And talk about, and talk about the symbolism again. I, you know, one of my, the biggest symbolisms, and, and I do feel that my first, my first big international piece or situation was the was Elton John in in Central Park and and if you go on YouTube and, and see him watch him play Benny and the Jets or Saturday night in that outfit and I the symbolism mm -hmm. on the on the outfit that I designed is loaded with arrows and in fact his back the front of his the front of his jacket is is like a Mexican bandito when they used to mm -hmm. they used to have they used to have their cartridges or whatever they would put them around their oh, bodies yeah. And so it, the, the first, the two rows are in the front and then it goes into the back and it becomes a big lightning bolt, a piano lightning bolt going down his back. And like when they have close-ups of him, of his hands playing the piano, he's got these arrows on his cuffs that are pointing at the keys. So I like, so to me that, that outfit was just totally about power to mm -hmm. me. And if I was him, if I was him, if I was that rock star who I would, you know, obviously I would, actually love to be that you are those a rock star, Andre. You are those, a rock star. <laughs> thank you thank you but those that was a symbolism direct symbolism lightning bolts and arrows you know all that in 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 his costume that went that 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 partnered with his energy with his mm -hmm. power love it and, and and new york's power as well don't forget <laughs> indeed oh yes you yeah. know i'm a native new yorker so that I oh there you go close right. to my heart so um, I, I I do believe I I believe in these PFPs PFPs very very much I I believe they're they're very very powerful but funny at the same time. <laughs> indeed. So I'm curious, Andre. You are clearly very creative. You're open to new doing new things, working with different mediums, different opportunities, like creating a whole NFT PFP collection of 10,000 pieces. <laughs> that is well, thank not. God. That it keeps me on the edge, you know, it keeps me uh, relevant or something. Yes, I think so too. But yeah. I think it definitely speaks to your personality that you've kind of just walked into all these different opportunities with open arms. And you've been, I will say, I've been lucky enough to follow you of so, with, for so much of this process. And I am always just very inspired and honored to be able to see how open you are and how creative, just with a beautiful grace that you approach really everything you do. So um, I'm curious, though, in these NFT PFPs, where we did give you some constraints, <laughs> we did say, keep in mind, these are only going to be this size <laughs> and we need to make sure that, you know, you have your shark here. <laughs> How were you able to most leverage your creativity during creating these? Because I think, and I will, I will just preface this with saying, I think there are a lot of artists that perhaps are here on this call who are interested in getting into NFTs, perhaps have an opportunity or will have an opportunity to do an NFT PFP project. And I'm curious to hear how you felt that you were most able to get creative in, cre in doing these PFPs. Well, you know, well, that's a good question. I, I think... The creativity was already there. I, 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 the challenge to me, because of the ten thousand pieces, strategically, was how do you do these drawings 
we're thinking mm. about how to keep them to keep the different traits as separate as possible so they don't overlap each other. So that that became a big challenge, and not not necessarily with the shark itself, even though it has different clothes on, it's naked sometimes, it's not, it's this, mm -hmm. it's got different things hanging from its neck, but the 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 the, the background is what's always different. The mm. background cool. the background sets up the different scene, and and that's a whole different scene from the next picture, and yet they still have to somehow you know come together in, in all these interpretations of them, and and and, and actually in that regard. That's actually been a really cool thing for me on this in that I, 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 I feel I can't really take all the responsibility because the machine, the machines do their own thing and I can't control that. So and there's no way that I can, can micromanage it or control it like that. So mm. it just it gives me a certain freedom where I'm I, I'm just I'm projecting. I'm I'm manifesting that they're all going to turn out perfectly well because <laughs> I can't I, you can't control the 10,000 I mean I, I can't so I found it very strategic it, that that was uh, you know, the structure that had to be done working within the structure was thinking about how these things can fit together as it goes down the line but That's as far as uh, overall for the sharks in particular like I said they were originally all white now they're different colors and everything but I, I've never had I don't think these sharks have ever had even close to the to the kind of presentation that they're getting now and because of the because of the nft thing but to me that is all about the computer screen the lit you know i, I still call it a tv screen but the lit screen you know all the colors all the all the all the energy the colors the the the, the feelings of them are all you know, push to the max because of that lighted screen. So that excites me tremendously to have these colors and the lines and the colors, the flow, the 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 perspective, to have that have that 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 published so colorfully and so in the audience's face. I, I just love that. Mm, I, I, love it. Yeah, I just Very love cool. it. I will yeah. also say, so I got to see your kind of the rarity matrix that was created pretty much tracking all of the different traits and what percentage well rough percentage of the sharks could have those traits and when i looked at the matrix i of course because we always kind of have our own perceptions of what what things are going to look like and i've i've seen lots of your artwork and i will say when you when i got to see <laughs> all of the layers and some of the samples that have come through it really blew my mind you you really did a really thorough detailed job a lot of beautiful things i think are well, like there. i said I, I like i said i have i i i have an excellent team I, I i couldn't be happier with with the team that i have that's really helped tremendously putting this together but i feel the same way you do i'm amazed by it you know i'm, I'm amazed by yeah. it I, I, and I and i still don't know exactly how it's going to work out but but i i so far so excellent you know really hopefully we can hopefully we can solve that Rather, we can show you all 10,000 in the next couple of weeks. As I said, we do value your input. If there are any that get compiled that you don't like, we will remove right. them and, you know, work back and, and forth. The, and the audience can be, and the audience can, is, is part of this as well, because they're going to be able to see the evolution of all this, right? Indeed. So, yep. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be posting some updates and some sneak peeks and all that good stuff, which would be great. Right. So yeah. question for you. So all in all, how did your part of the, PFPs going go so far, and I know we've got still more to do. Haven't seen all ten thousand, but as far as you drawing and painting, coloring in these sharks, you're pretty much done. So, what did you think about that as an experience? Well, fantastic. I mean, just a fantastic experience because you know I, I had the sharks, uh, I had the sharks, and and they were extremely appropriate. Just well, obviously because we we both got in at the very exact same time with beneath the waves, the fantastic, fantastic ocean. Conservancy organization. I, I couldn't be happier to be involved with them, whether it's through the artwork or as a citizen, purely as a citizen. I, I couldn't be happier with the work, you know, with the work that they're doing, helping to save the oceans and the sharks. The sharks are the are a big mandate of theirs, and so a percentage of the percentage of of of, of income or profits from from the sale of the NFTs goes goes to uh, beneath the waves as well. So that's the eco digital. Mm -hmm. that one, right. Good. Correct. Yeah. There's a whole. Obviously, there's there's a whole new language to, I know. Uh, to to discover and get over. And you're doing you're doing a lot right off the bat. So 
Yeah. A lot right off the bat, yes. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> but that's the way I like it, you know. That's the way I like it, you know. Mm-hmm. Dive in deep. Dive into deep water. I love it. Oh, yes, yeah. like the sharks. Exactly. Perfect. So I am curious, Andre, and I want to leave a little time for questions. But um, so actually, everyone who's on the call, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to tweet at us on FTG Live. We'll be getting to those in a few minutes. All in all, though, would you be interested in doing another PFP drop? Would you be interested in doing one with us? I just kind of wanted to, wanted to get your your take on that. Well, sure, I would, of course. Sure. Yeah. Love it. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. And hopefully, yes, hopefully I've no, been. No, because again, I, I love the repetition thing. So that's always been in my mind. I've always had a thing for this repetition thing. So now that this repetition thing has gotten to this 10,000 or 5,000, 10,000, whatever the thing is now with, with that, that, that drives me crazy. I love it. So how, how, how to adapt to that is a fantastic thing for me. I mean, it's always, it's love really it. always been with me. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Very good. Well, I will say at NFTG, we are very excited for what we can do in the future. As I mentioned, I think there's a lot more that can happen as far as I mentioned, having people be able to post these NFT PFPs in the metaverse. They buy digital land, which is such a crazy concept, but they don't buy digital land and have a house in the metaverse and want to post your PFP. Or if they buy your eco digital painting and want to have that in their house and then post that NFT in the metaverse, you know, these are all things that absolutely are feasible now. And I can only imagine where things are going to continue to kind of go now that there's been so much attention on NFTs, which personally excites me in that I've been following the space for a long time Mm -hmm. and have seen a lot of utility and kind of creative routes that could, could happen. But, you know, without the number of people involved and the excitement from kind of the larger community, it's, it's hard to do things like that. So very excited for what we can do with you. It has been, like I said, an absolute pleasure to work with you. Let's see, before we get to questions, and like I said, tweet any questions. I will open it up for any live questions if anyone has any, but preference would definitely be to tweet so we can go through those. Andre, I heard you are doing an exciting giveaway. So do you want to tell us about that? Yes, we are actually in honor of this interview today and getting ready to start with the actual manufacturing of, uh, of the, the uh, generated art. Tonight we are giving away a we're giving away a, a water shark tonight. So I, I, I just want to let people really know. Quick. I will let everyone know. So Andre created watercolor sharks that sold. However, we now are selling the NFT version of those. So this is what he's referring to when he says water sharks. But keep going, Andre. Right. So so people should go to Shark, Shark Tales Art on Twitter. Yep. Perfect. And once they get there, I think there there are instructions there of how to apply or, or whatever they have to do in order to apply for shark, a water shark. So if you go to our Shark dot arc art on Twitter, you need to like, retweet, and comment to enter. That's it. Right. Retweet. Uh, exactly. Yes, indeed. So you'll be entering into a drawing for a Mirapolsky water shark, which is awesome. I will say sharktails.art is in this room right now. So feel free to check them out, follow them, and hopefully... And I, and I think that water shark that's available, I think there are a couple left. It's called, it's called uh, Butch and Sundance. Love it. Right. So great. Yeah, and I love it. Creative, that's, a, that's, creative, a humorous, that's a humorous thing. Too. Creative <laughs> names for all of your pieces. It's fantastic, yeah. Andre. Right. So good. All right, fantastic. Well, big thank you for joining us for your second interview, hopefully of many interviews. I always think it's a pleasure to talk to you and get to hear more about your work and your experience. I wanted to, let's see, we've got a couple of minutes. So if there's anyone on the call on Twitter spaces that has any questions. If you want to raise your hand now, I'd be interested in hearing. You maybe fit in one or two quick questions. To be honest, Andre, I think I think we've covered a lot of it. There will be more that we'll talk through as as far as kind of sneak peeks and perhaps also educational content for what this whole process is like. It's a unique one that I think not a lot of people really know how it works how these crazy PFP collections just appear. (laughs) And there's a lot, I think you can attest to, there's a lot of steps that occur, not only on the tech front, but- A lot of steps. Involving you as an an artist. And I'm happy to hear it's been a positive experience for you. 
very excited to hopefully be able to do another NFT drop of some sort, whether that's baby sharks for the NFTs that we've created or some sort of something. I think there are a lot of different routes we could go. So we'll be looking to community ideas to kind of help drive some of that direction, which will be fantastic. And looking forward to continuing to collaborate with you and have this be a mutual, just fantastic experience and mesh of art and technology and all of the best things. So let's see. Any last remarks, Andre? Well, uh, just just that we're going to be starting the new year, 2022, in a really big PFP way. <laughs> we are indeed. All the way. <laughs> so with that, wishing everyone a lovely, lovely holiday season and a happy, happy holidays, year. everybody. And Andre, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Feel free to join us on Discord, on Twitter, on Instagram, all NFTG live. And like I said, if you any of what I mentioned earlier intrigues you, feel free to join the community for not only a NFT PFP, several NFT PFP drops every year, and they'll be different. We're working on our second one already, differently natured. So the second one will be with, oh my God, why is his name <laughs> slipping Jeff my memory right now? Jeff Hamilton. Uh, Jeff Hamilton. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> right Our second PFP drop will be with Jeff Hamilton. Thank you, Andre, which is very exciting. So we'll be, he is a designer of some incredible, incredible jackets. He's worked in a lot of mediums, but he's most known for his jackets. And so he'll be doing kind of a digital version, likely of jackets that then can be used on many platforms, which is very exciting. But we are beyond excited to have Andre, you kind of pioneer this space as far as the first NFT PFP for NFTG members. Very excited to see what that looks like. And we will be in touch with more information. Excellent. Great. So good. All right. Perfect. Well, to everyone on Twitter Spaces, big thank you for joining. Hopefully you enjoyed this session. We will be releasing this session as a video shortly after we do some edits. So be sure to tune into that. We have released the first Andre Miropolsky interview on YouTube. You can find that on our Discord. Definitely check that out. We will also be releasing, we did an interview with Beneath the Waves, a couple of the Beneath the Waves inter team members, which was fantastic. That will be our next video drop, but definitely excited to have all of you. If you're not in the community, join the Discord, hopefully a membership and excited to create some awesome stuff. So big thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed. Wishing you happy holidays and a good new year. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Take care. Talk soon. Okay. Thanks all. Yeah.